look to frame me. Good morning and welcome to Caring's Women in Motion talk. I'm Elizabeth Wagmeister, Variety's Chief Correspondent, and this morning we are very excited to have a duo of two fantastic women who are producing partners. Now you know her as an Oscar-winning actor, Kate Blanchett, but today we are going to talk about her production company, Dirty Films, along with her producing partner, Coco Francini. Please stay tuned. In just a few minutes, we're going to be talking with Kate and Coco. Um, just a quick announcement, can everybody in here please
you. Okay. It's just okay. like I know. I'm like, where are we going? Good morning. I'm so excited to be here with both of you. <laughs> Us as well. Yeah, thank you. Congrats on your premiere yesterday. How, how was it, seeing it with, with an audience in the theater? Yes, we had um, uh, a film we, we co-produced with Scarlet Pictures, mm -hmm. The New Boy, which is um, from one of our favorite directors um, of all time, but a wonderful Australian mm -hmm. indigenous director, Warwick Thornton. Mm -hmm. And he won the camera door, was it 15? Years ago, yeah, for his first feature, um, Samson and Delilah. Mm -hmm. So to be returning to that quadrant of the festival, mm -hmm. for him um, and for all of us in his wake, was really profound. And I think it screened really well. Mm -hmm. So we're very proud of the film, and it was a great, you know, platform mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Now I want to talk more about New Boy, but first let's talk about how the two of you came together as producing partners. I know that you met on Mrs. America, is that correct? We did. Mm. We met on Mrs. America. We joined forces, I mean, Kate and Andrew, uh, about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And three is our lucky number. We have three films coming out this year, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, we had Shade at Sundance, New Boy here, and Fingernails um, upcoming with Apple in the mm -hmm. fall. And uh, I think we just gravitated towards each other um, because we were so passionate about filmmakers and mm -hmm. we had so many amazing filmmakers work on that show with us. Mm -hmm. And um, when we were finishing, you know, we decided to partner up. Yeah, the conversation was great. I mean, that's the thing is everyone talks, even though we're very director driven as a, as a company and we've both been in you know, our separate experiences and I have been as an actor, you know, and, and also as a producer, mm -hmm. filmmaking is a conversation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being in, in dialogue with, with Andrew, of course, as a, you know, work partner and life partner, mm -hmm. but also with Coco was really invigorating because it makes you think in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, when you ask each other, you know, maybe the questions that you hadn't thought of mm -hmm. or they, they, they challenge your assumptions or your way, way of working. It's a, it keeps things sort of robust and, you know, it's, it's good to have that free song. And that definitely happened with Mrs. America. Mm -hmm. You know, there were some um, directors that, that Coco threw into the mix mm -hmm. who were really, really e exciting, Lore and, and Janixa. Um, mm -hmm. So that was really exciting. So we had a, a simpatico taste and it was mm -hmm. great to allow that to evolve. Yeah. And now I think we've built a company and we're building a company that's really about supporting those voices, supporting mm -hmm. those filmmakers and you know, um, really 
when we come onto a project as producers, mm -hmm. we're there to support the vision 100%. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why we join forces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Coco, can you talk about how you got your start as a producer? Um, I've worn many, many hats, uh, and which I think is a good thing for a producer. Mm -hmm. um, I, I worked for many years with Quentin Tarantino, mm -hmm. uh, which I think informed the way that I work with filmmakers. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been like a publicist, I've been a producer, I raised $3.1 million on the internet for Zach Braff's film mm -hmm. 10 years ago. So um, I think that it's, it's all about finding the ways to get things done, finding the ways to get things made, and, and that's been you know, my career from the beginning to now. Mm -hmm. And Kate, at what point did you have this interest in producing, and why did you want to explore that side of the business? Well, I've always been interested in that um, wonderful American phrase that you're always using, the, the process from soup to nuts. Mm -hmm. you know, um, so it's not just everyone talks about, you know, why did you choose the role? Um, and f for me, it's, it's never been the role. It's always been about who you're in conversation with. And mm -hmm. I'm as interested in the development process mm -hmm. as, um, as I am in the process of shooting it. And then I'm really interested in the post process right mm -hmm. through to how d distribution and marketing. Mm -hmm. And Andrew and I ran the de facto national theatre company in Australia for, well, we did it for almost 10 years and I did it for six. And it was really great to be producing the work of emerging um, uh, performing artists mm -hmm. as well as mid-career um, and late-career artists and placing them in dialogue with one another. And so this just feels an extension for me of my work as an actor. Um, and that, just to your point too, like I think both Andrew and Coco and I have, we understand how films get made. Like, mm -hmm. we're not prepared to pick up the gear and, and move it around. <laughs> and people usually associate that kind of lugging with, with women. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we're, we're prepared to do the, the jobs big and small yeah. in an mm -hmm. egoless kind of way. And that's the way we make films in Australia. And it was really great to discuss, you know, real, with Coco to realise that that's exactly the way you do. It's like we're, we're, you, you, um, as a producer, you are kind of have to be a publicist sometimes. You mm -hmm. do have to be, you know, a crew member. You and get you people have, coffee. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do a lot of coffee, yeah. and, and also you need to know it, what the post process needs. Mm -hmm. And I think we understand hands on all of those things in a creative way. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's getting the money. Of course, none of us would be here mm. if if you know that wasn't is a big enormous part of the job. Mm -hmm. But I think what often gets lost in the art of producing is that creative dialogue with the mm -hmm. people who are at the centre of the process. And, you, you know, I think we're here to protect that part. Absolutely. You know, not in a sacred way, mm -hmm. but ask, um, you know, the creative important questions, but also support that creative vision. So that just feels, for me, like an extension of my work as an actor. Mm -hmm. And Coco, can you talk about working with Kate, obviously, with so much experience in this industry, how that's an asset to her work as a producer. Well, mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, there's the process, like Kate's saying, there's the process of making the film, and that, mm -hmm. that, that can be a sacred process, you know, in the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. And then there's the process of everything after. Mm -hmm. And, I mean... Which can be a bun fight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Kate, you've been doing this for so long, and you've you've seen that process through in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. I've always found Kate to be incredibly smart in the way that we're talking about marketing a film, mm -hmm. and, the, and, and of, beyond her creative insights. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed when we were doing Mrs. America, we were in the post process, and, and we were working on notes together. Mm -hmm. It's just, you are so, um, you're so able to get to the heart of what each character needs and what they're trying to say in like the most minute ways and in the largest ways. And so it's so interesting for me as a producer working with you as an actor because I don't, that's not the natural lens that I come at things from. So I've learned so much. So there's kind of twofold. There's the creative process and then there's the experience of bringing something out and getting the largest platform for something and supporting the the piece of work you've all made together. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just been wonderful to do that together over the past few years. Now, in New Boy, you obviously have a role in that film, mm -hmm. but I know that most of the slate at Dirty Films, you, you do not. You're behind the camera. So when do you choose to act in one of your projects or not? 
I'm always trying to get out of acting. <laughs> I've been trying to stop it's acting true. my entire professional <laughs> life. Um, and, you know, I, I, I remember, you know, um, an Australian film director saying to me really early on in my career that, you know, I had to stop taking small roles. Uh-huh. And I said, why? Uh-huh. I said, that was the most interesting role. And in. I didn't want to play the lead. I wanted that one because uh-huh. I can experiment with it and I really want to be in dialogue with those actors uh-huh. and that cinematographer and uh-huh. that director on that set and that location. Uh-huh. Um, and and so the idea of I remember when when Andrew and I were running the Sydney Theatre Company, when um, I directed a show or um, it was a show that we produced, large or small, on opening night, when I wished the actors the best of luck and they walked onto the stage, and I went into the auditorium, I had this profound relief, <laughs> you know, in a way. <laughs> but then I, what I did realise, that the nerves are exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Like, it's more nerve-wracking if you've directed a show, mm-hmm. sitting there and knowing that you've got no control <laughs> over what's going to happen in the mm-hmm. evening. But, um, yeah, I think it's... I, for me, uh, you know, I just said it earlier, it's, it's about the conversation. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that conversation involves me being in front of the lens and mm-hmm. sometimes it's, you know, back behind being a little bit too bossy sometimes, um, yeah, from behind. Because the facilitation is equally as creative. Mm-hmm. Now, whoever wants to answer this, can you talk about the name, Dirty Films? Where did that come from? <laughs> well, I suppose like the company, it's evolved. Mm-hmm. It's been in Andrew's and my life for a long time when he was um, a freelance editor mm-hmm. uh, in, in Australia. They, when they were cleaning the the um, the negative for the, mm-hmm. um, they used to mark it up with um, like a China Graph pencil, mm-hmm. and they had to clean it to, and run it through the the solution so that they could screen the rushes. And he uh, and the other um, editors used to have a joke that they don't they don't screen dirty films, mm-hmm. they clean them. So it was about the editing process, but it's evolved. We kept it because it's kind of cheeky. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've got some really inappropriate emails because of that. <laughs> Because of our name, but you know, maybe we might evolve. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> in, in, we know. Who knows what's going to happen? Always keep our options yeah, open. Keep you know. your it's a very lucrative <laughs> industry, apparently. Um, but um, it's evolved, I think, because we're very interested in process, mm-hmm. and so we we like the idea. We don't mind getting our hands dirty. Mm-hmm. You know, we um, we we we're interested in the, the the complicated, often messy process of making something. Mm-hmm. Um, that it doesn't. We're not. We're, we're not. Results driven. Um, we're not trying to end game before mm-hmm. we've, you know, got into the weeds, so yeah. to speak. I'm we using want our me- fingerprints. Many metaphors. We want our fingerprints on that film. Yeah. Yes. I think. And yeah. when when I joined Kate and Andrew, we talked about the name. We we're like, are we gonna? Is it? Yeah. Is it new? Mm-hmm. And for me, I was like, I I I love this, and I love the the tangibleness mm-hmm. of the name. That it's mm-hmm. really about something that you can hold in your hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I've done. More, I've done more work on film um, yeah. than I actually have on digital mm-hmm. because of working with Quentin and mm-hmm. uh, in Django Unchained. My office was surrounded by film racks, so mm-hmm. I kind of I grew up in that mm-hmm. in that environment too. Mm-hmm. So it meant something to me, and it was nice for those kind of ideas to come together. Mm-hmm. Now, can you talk about what sorts of projects you are looking for at Dirty Films? Well, I, for me, I'm I'm a little bit wary of mission statements Mm -hmm. saying we make this type of Mm -hmm. cinema Mm -hmm. I think our taste is really eclectic Mm -hmm. and I think in the end it's I think the types of films one interested in is interested in and the the brand of a company Mm -hmm. evolves over the time and I think that's what I love about working with Coco and with Andrew Mm -hmm. is that we we never discount any conversation Mm -hmm. because you never know where it's going to lead you but I mean I think I I think Slate currently I suppose is evidence of what we're interested in. Yeah I mean um, we're working with a lot of international filmmakers we're looking (laughs) working with a lot of female filmmakers Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that all you have obviously you have your ability and that can be learned but your taste is something that that evolves over time Mm -hmm. that is is wholly your own and we've been so lucky the three of us Anytime someone's like, hey, I'm thinking about this thing, we were like, yes. Mm. I mean, there's never been a situation mm. where uh, somebody said, oh, I'm not sure. Mm. So we've just been so aligned on our taste, and it is eclectic. It is, um, you know, 
sometimes I feel like we're like, is this the hardest thing we could possibly do? <laughs> like, let's jump into that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's it's really writer, director, filmmaker driven primarily, and um, we're just excited. And all levels, emerging mm -hmm. filmmakers, established filmmakers, we're kind of working in both those spheres right now. But also we were involved in a really interesting um, VR project mm -hmm. that, that, that Coco found with a group called Marshmallow Feast. Marshmallow at, Laser, Feast. Laser Feast. <laughs> and um, it was a, called Evolva, about going inside the body into the process of breathing. Mm -hmm. And they were using um, techniques that they used for people with PTSD. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it was a really fascinating insta VR installation that I never would have imagined being involved yeah. with, but it was absolutely fascinating. It was at mm -hmm. the Tribeca Film Festival. Yeah. So, um, hopefully we'll tour. Yeah, Terrence Malick uh, executive produced it with mm -hmm. us, um, and Ed Pressman, the late Ed Pressman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just one of those, and, and it will tour, I hope, um, and Kate uh, graciously leads you into the experience by reading some poetry. It's really fantastic. So we're, we're interested in all these different areas. It's mm -hmm. certainly not fitting into a box. Because mm -hmm. I think, too, it's... Um, and I, Andrew and I really learned this in the, 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 the theatre, mm -hmm. and something that can be frustrating sometimes when you're working on, on a film project is that sometimes things happen incredibly quickly. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be able to jump fast and move fast and you don't want to arrest the natural momentum of, of a project mm -hmm. and then sometimes some projects can take a decade to, mm -hmm. to realize so you know it was great to work on that that marshmallow laser fist yeah. you know installation because it happened super super quickly mm -hmm. but say something like new boy that's it's been in warwick norton's bottom drawer for you know almost 18 years mm -hmm. and and but then when he pulled it out we we knew it had been percolating for a long time so we needed to act quickly mm -hmm. so it, um before we lost him again <laughs> um yeah so it just you have to be alive to those different rhythms mm -hmm. and the different scale too mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. now on mrs america i know that it was mostly female directors I never like mm -hmm. to assume anything, but I imagine that that was a very specific effort that you wanted to have women direct those episodes. Can mm. you speak a bit about that? Well, we thought it was going to be, we, we just sort of were around the table one day. I mean, look, mm -hmm. let's just make a list. Let's mm -hmm. make our best mm -hmm. efforts. And without drawing breath, we suddenly had a list of 70 women mm -hmm. who were all completely qualified, mm -hmm. capable, and inspirational. And then it became, it's like, oh, God, who's available? How, we've only got eight episodes. <laughs> you know, how do we nine, nine, nine yeah. episodes? Yeah. Well, it was eight at the beginning, yeah. and then it became. Yeah. I think it was six, and then it was know, eight, and then it I was know, nine. Yeah, I guess bigger and bigger. <laughs> so I think that was that was so exciting. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of women making this show, going, let's make our best efforts, and then realizing just how easy it was and how lazy it is, mm -hmm. how lazy the industry has been. Mm -hmm and neglectful, you know, mm -hmm. to its detriment. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a profound malaise and a, a level of um, homogeneity to the work because the people behind the lens mm -hmm. who were making the work were too homogenous, you know. Mm -hmm. And so when you, get, when you get a diverse perspective, and I'm not just talking about um, gender and sexual orientation mm -hmm. and uh, cultural diversity and racial diversity, I'm talking about generational diversity. Mm -hmm. And so I think then the work becomes really exciting and I think that that's what made Mrs. America what it was. Mm -hmm. And it carried through to the crew as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Our uh, DP, one of our DPs is Jessica Ligagne, mm -hmm. amazing, at the time, 31 French-Canadian mm -hmm. DP. She mm -hmm. works with Ben Stiller. She shoots Severance. She's incredible. Yeah, she's amazing. And we, we made a rule, basically, for every single member of the crew that mm -hmm. for every position, you um, must interview a woman and you must interview a person of color mm -hmm. and just pushing people towards that goal mm -hmm. brought out all these very qualified people that mm -hmm. they just hadn't met before mm -hmm. um hadn't been pushed towards finding so our crew was was incredible mm -hmm. um and lots of women behind the camera as well yeah. mm -hmm. not just the directors is that for all your projects that you interview a woman and a person of color it, it's yeah. something we yeah. we and, yeah yeah I think it's important too, yes. but it's also it's just I mean it's why not I mean right. you yes, know of it's, it's we shouldn't even be having this conversation right right I'm and not you, telling you off no no, <laughs> no, 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 no exactly I'm saying, I'm saying we shouldn't have to be having it and yet we do because yeah. if not then it's not 
happening. No, and I look forward when we when to the day when we don't even need to have uh, you know interviews about women in cinema. Mm -hmm. You know where you know it's 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 a non-issue. Right. But we've both had experiences where we've walked on set and done the head count, mm -hmm. and you know you you wonder why the you sort of slightly feel alienated and, and annoyed some days is because you realize you get onto the the, the block through and you do the head count and I realize not only am I the only woman in the cast here for the block through there are 62 men and yep I'm the only woman <laughs> and so you go this ratio is bad and you go okay, I'll do it tomorrow okay 37 men three women no not good enough mm -hmm. and so it's not even like it the ratio is is um, seven to five. Right. You know, it's it's really disproportionate, mm -hmm. and it means that you're always laughing at the same jokes. Mm -hmm. You're always, you know, it's like, and so the hour. I mean, okay, I, I, I do have a really good sense of humor, but it's like, you know, let's let's change it up. Yeah. Can you talk about Kate the the changes that you've seen for women in this business since the time that you started out? I, I think it's top of mind. Mm -hmm. I think diversity is top of mind, and I think it's um, in a way that you can feel sometimes, if, if I'm honest, you can feel sometimes people going, okay, we're having a diversity conversation. That's good. That means we're having it a lot, and, we, and unfortunately we need to keep having it, you know, mm -hmm. until, until all of the rooms and, um, and at all levels of the process of, of, of making cultural product, for want of a better a phrase, um, until it just doesn't... Um, until the product is as diverse as it should be. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've noticed enormous changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that, um, that there's a lot more from when I started off as an actress in the film industry. Mm -hmm. There was a sense of, and I, to be frank, it did come from the media more than it came from the women that I uh, encountered on set, that you were competitors. Mm -hmm. You weren't collaborators. Mm -hmm. And we are natural collaborators. Mm -hmm. And so... I've noticed that, that women have really got each other's backs. Yes. You know, and that they, that, that the women who have power to, to um, you know, elevate the wage, to say we're going to have favoured nations on this set in terms of, you know, all of the sort of perks, although the types of films that we mm -hmm. tend to have, <laughs> there are no perks. But, but, you know, to make sure that there's, um, that the women, you know, who maybe don't, ha are not in that mm -hmm. position to, to argue their corner, mm -hmm. you argue it for them and with right. them, right. you know, and empower them to have that voice on set. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the statistics, it's still staggering. When you look at women versus men behind the camera in executive positions, there are not that many female directors who are getting these big budget films. Kate, are you ever interested in directing? I get asked a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do get asked a lot. But for me, you know, there's so many things that I uh, find enjoyable in the, in the process of mm -hmm. making a, a film. And so many directors that I yet want to work with as an actor um, and, and as a producer. Um, and it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm slow as an actor. I mean, I'm be d triply slow as a, a, as a director. There's a, a project that I'm very, very, we're, we're very keen on. Um, that that we've, we're we're discussing. So hopefully that will come to fruition. But it's mm -hmm. about making the time, you know, and knowing mm -hmm. intimately how long it takes through development, through you know all of those processes, right mm -hmm. through to being there, mm -hmm. you know, at every event like this for the movie. <laughs> and I also have four children and a garden. But I'm, you know, <laughs> which I don't want the plants to die. The garden so. takes a while. It does, yeah. <laughs> well, no, to it. But I mean, you do learn, it's, it's a cliche, but you do mm -hmm. learn patience, mm -hmm. which is something I need to learn. Um, and you learn that from gardening. Yes. I've um, killed a lot of cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> Coco, can you speak a bit about your upcoming slate? You mentioned those three films. Um, the three films are coming out this year, all in the fall. I feel like that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was um, a busy year. <laughs> it was a busy year. Um, we have a film uh, with Ben Stiller that Kate and Ben are going to act in together as well called The Champions. Um, and he's directing. And he's directing. Mm -hmm. um, what else will we announce? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, I don't know if we can announce it. We use here. <laughs> yeah. You know, we have we have a very large slate. To be uh -huh. honest with you, we've probably got fifteen films wow. uh, in development. We have a we have a film with Emma Corrin that we're going to shoot this fall, mm -hmm. um, and we have 
that yeah, no, we can tell her we we that we're going to tell you soon. about soon. We, yeah. <laughs> We'll stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> now, what do you both think about the state of the industry? Because right now, there's more content than ever, which is a positive because there's so much room for new voices. But is it hard to stand out when there's so many places to look and so much content to consume? Yeah, but it's also, the, there's a lot of fear around t too. So mm -hmm. you might be able to get some money to make something, mm -hmm. but then you've got to say, is that the right partner? Are they going to lose their nerve? And so sometimes you sort of think, oh, well, you know, it's probably you hate me for saying this, <laughs> but it's probably good to take a little bit less money, but to, but to have a really brave mm -hmm. partner to, to, you know, collaborators to, to, to make the thing. Um, I think there's a lot being, being made, but, but then there's also a lot that's being... It, it's, I think things are, so well I think made. it's hard to find things. I think that there's a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. um, when I, uh, as, a, as a film, as an audience, mm -hmm. um, I'm finding more films from uh, international auteurs, international filmmakers, female mm -hmm. filmmakers that are so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and more, I think today more than ever, there is an emphasis on getting those films made, which is very, very exciting mm -hmm. to us. Um, but it's about getting them seen. You know, and I think that's the big challenge that we're facing. And it, how they're seen. And how they're seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how they're kind of um, contextualized. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, uh, seeing a movie in a movie theater is, is an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. um, it's been through, a, we've had a couple rough years. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the filmmaking and the, the interest and interesting points of view, new points of view, I think it's more exciting than ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of movie theaters, what is doing well right now is big franchise films, superhero films, sequels. Are they? they are. They oh. are. Yes. That's good. Yes. <laughs> what do you think about that? Do you think that Hollywood needs to take more chances on fresh ideas and new ideas? I don't know. I, you know, I, I know you live in L.A. I don't know what Hollywood <laughs> means. I, I actually don't know what Hollywood means. I think Hollywood is a, I'm going to sound like a, a, a t-shirt slogan, it's a state of mind, uh -huh. you know, and I think you can, find, you can find a version of Hollywood thinking in Australia or in France, mm -hmm. you know, in Germany. It's, um, I think, I think that a healthy industry is one that is, that is diverse in scale, mm -hmm. you know, and I think often we, we, we butt up uh, or try and compare, and once again, the media does this, it, you know, it's like apples and oranges. How can you possibly compare the ambitions um, and the resources of um, a film that's made for two hundred and fifty million dollars mm -hmm. and and one that's made for one point five? Mm -hmm. You know, and and the production design and the level of inventiveness in the costumes mm -hmm. and the resources that they did or didn't have. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I think a healthy industry gives a platform <coughs> and access for an audience to that entire. Um, cornucopia of, of, of um, cinematic experience and I for one as an actor have enjoyed being in those mm -hmm. films of different scales mm -hmm. so um, yeah I don't know I mean I, I think there I mean if you're talking about at the box office mm -hmm. you also got to look at the the, um, the amount of screens that those things are on mm -hmm. you know so it's for example this film I made with uh, Todd Field last year, mm -hmm. he was very particular about the how it was released. So it was only released when it first came out in the States on four screens. Mm -hmm. And people were saying, oh, you look at the box office numbers, it didn't do very well. It's like, it was on four <laughs> screens. <laughs> <laughs> Those numbers were phenomenal, uh -huh. right. phenomenal. It wasn't mm -hmm. on, it didn't go wide, it didn't even start on a thousand screens. Right. So you just got to kind of, you got to do the math mm -hmm. on that stuff and not, and not be quick to judge. And right. sometimes it's good to start in a niche way you know so it's, it's really important to look at how those things are uh, are they doing well right you know is is the uh, are those um big so-called blockbusters really the blockbusters mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but you know i love going to see julia roberts and george clooney you yes know? i do i love them both who so, doesn't who doesn't who doesn't yeah. uh do you think is it harder to get financing for a project as a woman um I'm sure it is. <laughs> undoubtedly. It's hard to get paid as a uh, as a <laughs> as an actress, so I'm guessing mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Yeah, undoubtedly. I mean, it's it's uh, we're not there yet. Yeah. You know, um we make films for an audience. Mm -hmm. We'd love for our industry to look like our audience, mm -hmm. and we're not there yet. 
Um, but I think we're, we are making progress. Mm -hmm. But I, I think transparency is really important. Yes. I mean, we always talk about money like we shouldn't be talking about money. Mm -hmm. But why don't we talk about money? We talk about all the other, we open out all the other aspects of the, the, the process that we're expected to. I think the more transparent mm -hmm. all of that stuff is, mm -hmm. um, the, the more you can work out how the money is flowing yeah. and where it, where it needs to flow mm -hmm. and where it's not flowing yet, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Do we have time for a few audience questions? Yes? There's a mic over here. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, a question to Kate Blanchett. Um, your roles, uh, the recent roles, uh, uh, portray a very strong women, uh, the women of Tar, uh, and also uh, this movie also. Uh, the, the character is very strong but also very weak um, maybe uh, can you talk about how do you design this uh, uh, change of tone be between a very strong woman who can reach every single goal but has also fragility inside I think, I think you're speaking to um, complex characters which I've always been drawn to or you know, early on in my career when you, there weren't opportunities and you had to make an opportunity out of what was traditionally called a girlfriend role, you try, you try and play against the banality or, or the simplicity of the character on the page. But when, when Todd Field has written a character like that, when you know that um, he is always going to put the camera in the right position to capture the nuances that you're trying to inflect the character with, then you're in really good hands. I mean, that, that character was on the page. You really didn't need to change a syllable. I just had to try and um, rise to that level of complexity, but it was there. And then, of course, when you're working opposite Nina Haas, uh, you know, I mean, the, the queen of uh, complex nuance mm -hmm. and, and fascinating uh, female characters. But it was, it was it, you know, sometimes you can... Sometimes a character is written like that on the page, but but the filmmaker doesn't trust it, you know. But that wasn't the case with Todd, so it's a, that was him. If she was nuanced in any way, your performance was phenomenal. Oh, thank you. It was thank you incredible. I believe we have time for one more question over here. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, uh, my name is Dr. Stacy Smith. I'm the uh, founder of the Annenberg Inclusion Initiative. Kate. Thank you for the shout out. In Thank tar. you. Thank you. Everything that, that was Todd, actually. He wrote the script. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. It came through you. <laughs> um, but thank you. Uh, and I will thank Todd, too. Um, uh, everything that you are articulating about the industry on point finances, market size, you know, distribution density of theaters or territories all on point. My question is far more, I just think, basic. Um, are there a few filmmakers' voices? You talked about their visions, but specific filmmakers that you're really excited to work with in the future, maybe not having a project attached, but people. And Coco, for you in particular, are you interested in directing? Because you've been in a producerial role in all these other lanes. Might directing come your way? I, I would love to we direct. Have discussed we that. have discussed it. <laughs> we have discussed it, yes. Um, filmmaker, I mean, we're working with so many amazing filmmakers. Um, Lucretia Martel for me. Lucretia Martel, Lucretia Martel. Yeah, we loved working with Janik Bravo on, yeah. on Mrs. America. And We'd Celine love to Sciamma. continue yeah. our work with Janik uh, Antonetta, uh, who directed an amazing Croatian film that won the Camera d'Or here a couple of years ago um, called Marina. Mm. And we, uh, you know, some, some men too, Hong some Kong. men too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, Jenny Soon, who we're making a film with in Hong Kong. Um, so we've, absolutely. Um, that, is, that is most of our conversation, is who we're excited about. Yeah. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.